Hello, we're going to discuss the triangles in a pitched roof. So when you're going to build a hand-pitched roof, you need to start by calculating all the lengths of the timbers, and we use that using something called trigonometry, which is just a fancy way of saying triangle maths. So here's a plan and a 3D picture of the advanced roof practical that uh, we run here at Acacia Ridge. So all of these timber members in here, the, uh, all the hip rafters and common rafters, are all part of triangles. And in the next video, we'll actually discuss the formulas used in those triangles. But initially, we're just going to look at where those triangles are in this roof. So the first rafter I'm going to highlight here is a common rafter. And this is where it appears on the uh, 3D view. So what I'm going to do is drop down a vertical line from the very peak and a horizontal line from the bottom end of that rafter. And you'll notice we form our little right angle triangle. So this is the basic shape. Everything that you work out is a part of a right angle triangle. Now if I throw the other rafter in on the other side, you'll notice those two triangles together, they go across the entire width of that section of the roof. So this is our span measurement all the way across. And that is the run of just that single rafter. Now I know it doesn't look like it in this drawing, but those two triangles are actually exactly the same size. And you can see in the plan that they're both the same length in the plan. And that's why we work off plans and we don't work off 3D views because the lengths appear a little bit disproportionate to what they are in real life. So that is the first basic triangle that we're looking at here. The next triangle is a little bit similar. These are the hip rafters. I've just hollowed three of those hip rafters and that's where they appear in this view. So we're going to do the same thing again. There's our vertical line and there's our horizontal line forming again another right angle triangle in there. Now even though both of these first triangles are vertical and they sit underneath the rafter, there's a slight difference between these. If we go back to the common rafter, this angle in here is the same as your roof pitch. This is your seat cut, which is your roof pitch. When we go to the hip rafters, this angle at the bottom here is the hip seat cut, but it is not the same as your roof pitch. So uh, that'll be discussed in the next video as well. But um, just don't uh, confuse all the seat cuts with being the same as a roof pitch. So those are the two vertical triangles. And you'll notice in the plan you can't actually see the triangle you're working on there. So you have to try and picture them sitting vertically underneath those rafters. The next triangle we're going to look at, I'm going to highlight two of those hip rafters again. And I'm going to throw in the common raft that sits next to it. And that one's a crown end, but its measurements are the same as the common rafter. So that has formed a triangle running up the rake of the roof. And there's the right angle side of that triangle. So this one does appear in the plan, but it doesn't appear in sort of the correct pr proportions because it's running up the rake of the roof. So there is actually four triangles sitting in that little image. I've just dropped this vertical line down, put the two runs in there, these two horizontal lines, and you can see there are four right angle symbols sitting in the right angle corners. This vertical line, that's what we call the rise of these rafters. You'll notice even though the hip rafter is longer than the common rafter, they both meet at the top, which means they both have the same rise, even though their run is different. The run of the hip rafter is longer than the run of the common rafter that's next to it. That's something you'll work out when you get to your calculations. So here are our four basic types of triangles in a pitched or an advanced pitched roof. We have our vertical triangles sitting underneath the common rafters and the crown ends. We have our vertical raft, our vertical triangles sitting underneath the hip rafters, which are a little bit longer than the common rafter triangle that's next to it. 
We also have a vertical triangle sitting underneath the valley, which is a little bit uh, looks a little bit squished in that view, but that's where it sits. We have the horizontal triangle down on the deck here, and you can see that is the triangle. I haven't drawn in the common raft that's next to it, but that's where the triangle sits on the flat there. And that's the right angle side is next to that common rafter and next to that crown in rafter in that corner and that corner. The last triangle that we just looked at a moment ago is this triangle that runs up the rake of the roof. Now it's a very important distinction between that triangle and that one. They both appear in the plan. And if I switch between the two, you can see they look exactly the same as each other in the plan. But it's important to remember that this triangle up the rake is longer. It's more stretched out. And this angle that's in here, this narrow angle in there, that's an important angle. Because that is what is called our edge cut angle for our hip rafter. So if you hear the phrase edge angle or edge cut angle, that's that there. It is not this angle down on the flat, on the horizontal. So that's something to remember. So when we're working off the plan and working out this angle in here, it's important to remember whether we're working on the flat triangle or on the triangle that's on the rake. So there are our, if I just go backwards to this bit, there are our four basic tri triangles. The two vertical ones, the horizontal one, and the one up the rake. So in the next video, we'll discuss the actual formulas that you're going to use to work out the lengths and the angles on them. And uh, hopefully you'll be able to picture where those triangles sit in the roof when you're working them out. Good luck.